everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. This is an uh, exciting one for us. Welcome. Welcome. So look, this, um, the first thing that we the first thing that we like to do here that that being excited for running events is like um, is uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land who are the the, the Wurundjeri people um, from the Kulin Nation. And, um, you know, we, we want to pay great respect to their elders, past and present, and into the future, and, and show great regard for the fact that they were here innovating for 60,000 years, and now we get to um, live and work in this beautiful city. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's our welcome. And further from that, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Tim, and I'm the head of events here at uh, Academy XI. And Academy XI, if this is your first time in the building, we're uh, a training uh, organisation. And we uh, train the disciplines of emerging design and technology. So we do short courses, team training, uh, full-time courses, very short courses um, in the disciplines of uh, UX, service design, augmented reality design, virtual reality design, growth marketing, which is probably the most applicable to this room, and uh, product management as well we're about to start. So. Uh, very, very uh, excellent courses. If you need any information about that, come see me, come see Steph, come see anyone that looks like they live here, and uh, we'll be able to give you some more info on that. In addition to that, we've got tons of events like these. In February, I've just finished programming the, the season, and there's about 25 events. So um, check, check, oh, thanks. thanks. Nobody knows whether that's a lot or not, but <laughs> thanks for that they do. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's the, 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 a lot of these free events as well, so come, come along to that, we like to see everybody here, that's what we do for the community. So look, it's very special to have you here, and we're very pleased to be um, partnering with Silicon Beach for the very first time. We've been going to Silicon Beach for years, I met the tour about four years ago when I was working on Pause Fest. So um, it's great that they're in our space and, and we're working together and collaborating. I think Tula's got a few more things to say about that, so I'll pass over to him in a second. Um, and then after the Tula, um, We'll get a quick introduction from our sponsors, um, who Atula may be able to um, introduce, or I'm happy to reintroduce them as well. Then I'll give away the logistics of how tonight's exactly going to run, and then we'll get into it. So thanks again. I'll pass over to Atula. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having us. Here we are, Tim at Academy XI. Very excited to uh, have you on board as sponsors and very excited to have you all here as part of Silicon Beach and Academy XI team together, working together, the two communities. So many of you, some of you may not know about Silicon Beach because you have registered through Academy XI. I'll just give you a little rundown of Silicon Beach. Silicon Beach is Australia's answer to Silicon Valley, but it's very different <laughs> because we are communities. It's a connected network of communities around the country. So Melbourne is the largest one. It was actually born in Sydney back in 2010. And uh, Sydney has about 4,500 members. It has been pretty inactive in the last few uh, years. While we have been growing, we are nearly 9,000. So last week, uh, Cullen and I, Cullen was holding the video there. And I were in Sydney along with Alexa, three of us were appointed last month as organizers of Sydney Silicon Beach. So we are working together, Sydney and Melbourne as one city through Silicon Beach. So that's going to be pretty exciting because, uh, uh, you know, Sydney is about the 18th uh, startup city in the world and Melbourne has sort of fallen out of the top 20. But together, I think we can be a very big force to be reckoned with in the world, so that's what we are working at. And uh, on uh, top of that, we'll be opening, reopening at Lake Silicon Beach, which uh, closed down uh, about a year ago. And uh, we'll be opening so many Silicon Beaches around the country, so you wouldn't know what's happening. So it's going to be the rising tide of Silicon Beach around the country. So um, we've got a few people here who are helping us, like Brian, Bill is a, a come on as a partner, and Linda, who's a judge, is helping us with uh, all of you all with presentation and uh, pitching skills. Got a Colin doing a podcast. So those of you who don't know about Silicon Beach, please Google Melbourne Silicon Beach. I normally have the uh, website up there, but I thought I won't do that. Let Academy Excite uh, do their thing tonight. 
Uh, we normally meet at a pub, Royal Bengal Hotel, so next month we'll be at that place. So join the meetup group, Silicon, Sydney, Silicon Beach, uh, sorry, Melbourne City. I'm still in Sydney. Uh, <laughs> Melbourne, Silicon Beach, if you Google, you'll find it and join. Uh, few things that uh, will be happening. We will be uh, promoting uh, IoT and uh, IoT related competition. It's not only IoT. It's organized by City of Ascension in China. They want people to apply uh, for a pitching competition like this, and there are huge prizes like twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars, plus a chance to go to China to Ascension with them. So. Please join, we will be sending uh, the emails out through meetup.com. If you join Silicon Beach, you'll get it. I'll send the details to the team as well, so that the academic side team can also have a look. Uh, join our Slack channel, we'll send the details to that as well. That's how we communicate with all you guys and uh, the behind the scenes team works on Slack. So uh, that's about it, Tim. Thanks a lot, and uh, we look forward to working with you across Sydney and Melbourne. If you, if you don't know, Academy Excite is in Sydney as well. Thanks. Thanks so, that's about it. So, I, I'll firstly, we'll have a quick word from our three sponsors for tonight, Rugare and uh, Bill, and then I'll introduce our judges, and then I'll introduce the format of tonight. So, first up from Simbisa Law, Rugare. Do you like to um, say a uh, quick hi and, and a wonderful prize that you're giving up to one of the runners up today? Thank you, Rem, for the Hi, everybody. My name is Rukare, and I'm the co founder of Smith and Owen. I'm the legal director there, too. Um, so, what do we do? So, we help startups, entrepreneurs, and investors grow and scale their businesses here in Australia and also overseas. And to just give you a bit more about that, I'll just share a short story. Um, his name is Panache. He's in Zimbabwe right now. Um, he's 20 years old, he started his medical degree in China and then could not actually complete his education because of funds, so he had to go back to Zimbabwe. And while he was in China, he started to write music and then he started sharing that music in South Africa, Zimbabwe and Botswana and right now the major radio stations in Africa want to play this music. So since I had a relationship with him, we were like, we need to actually protect his intellectual property and set him up properly. So right now, we've been in negotiations in South Africa, Botswana, and here in Australia and America to help him start his business and also protect his intellectual property and build a team around him. So it's miserable what we find a lot is we help our founders like yourselves, you know, how to set up your business properly from day one, how do you protect your intellectual property, and then how you commercialize that. So that just gives you a sense of what uh, we do at Simbisa Law. So we are a partner with Melbourne Silicon Beach and we have Power Hour every fortnight where we educate our founders like yourselves and investors um, on our different vignettes and stories um, and give you advice on how to deal with the legal issues you're facing inside of your business. And I just also want to say uh, thank you to Tim. Um, we're also going to be partnering with Tim and Academy XI and doing lunchtime workshops on a monthly basis here. And so we're looking forward to working with you, getting to know you, and being your trusted advisor. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks so much. And the, the lovely food that you've had tonight is courtesy of those uh, some Bisa as well. So great fuel for this evening. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Bill, would you like to say hello? Yes, this is working, cool. I'll keep it short because I think we're all keen to see those pictures. Um, my name is Bill. I'm a head of community and co-founder of Two Space. We turn restaurants closed during the day into a network of affordable and unique uh, co-working spaces. Um, it's really exciting times now. We have 10 venues and opening another 10 across three new cities. So we'll have a total of five cities uh, in the next 60 days. So it's a big challenge. Uh, we're kicking this off with a new hotel space in Sydney and a new space we just opened yesterday in Docklands, right in the water, really beautiful, so very much unique spaces. You're all welcome to come for a free trial, uh, so check it out. However, the winner of tonight is taking away a month at any of our spaces, because the members can go anywhere. And um, yeah, so we really want to see some kick-ass uh, pictures tonight. I'm a judge as well, so I'm, I swear I won't be biased. I love to work with anyone in my spaces, um, in our spaces, so just give us some kick-ass pictures. Thank you. So finally some housekeeping. Now look, we've, we've been told it's a very energetic crowd that 
uh, like standing on their feet and cheering where you set the pub. So that's how we set up tonight. If you do need to, to rest your weary bones, we've got a couple of chairs over there, and we've actually got a whole lot more in the room next door, so we can find chairs if it becomes all a bit much, but let's let's try and keep the energy for the time being. Um, so, right, we're about to get into it. Um, the final housekeeping stuff is the emergency exit. Well, you entered by the emergency exit, as you all very well know. So that's how you get back out, the emergency exit. So that's quite simple. Um, the bathrooms are out the, down the corridor and up, and down the corridor and, and, and down uh, out the stairs as well. Again, you know that already, you pass them. All right, so without further ado, the way this is going to work is we have 90 seconds. I'm going to be here with a bell and nothing else to do except look at my clock and ding. So we're going to give you 90 seconds uh, for the pictures. Um, on the, the 1 minute 10 mark, I'm going to ding the bell once. Um, and then on the 1 minute 30 mark, I'm going to um, essentially come and take you off the stage uh, by cutting your microphone and dinging incessantly. So um, uh, we, we don't have any room for, to move, unfortunately, because we have 15 um, pitches, which is really exciting. So that's the good part. The bad part is we have to be strict. Now, after the, uh, the 90 seconds, we're going to throw to our esteemed judges, Anna Reed from That Startup Show. Yay! <laughs> Style coach extraordinaire, Linda Simpatico from Simpatico. Uh, and Bill Rutten, you already cheered for him, so don't cheer for him again. All right, you can. You can. All right, so that there that is. And these, um, these three are going to ask maybe one question uh, of the picture, and, and, and if you're lucky, the audience might get a, a, a remark, but essentially it's, it's lightning round the whole time. So it's lightning. It's not even around, it's the, the whole thing. Alright, so first up, welcome uh, for the very first pitch, making welcome tonight. We've got Sean from Cars Deals to Me. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sean. Um, I'm the founder of Car Deals 2, the number me. Uh, we launched last year, February. We are a service or a platform that connects buyers anonymously to dealers. Um, and you get, the, you get the best price within two business hours of any new or used car here in Australia. And also New Zealand, because we're also available there. So if you have any friends and family, tell them to download it over there. It's really, really good. Um, we launched last year, February, at Horsefest. Um, and to our surprise, our traction has been phenomenal. Uh, we've been running, we've been to London with Vic Trade, which is amazing. Um, we're, we're doing some really cool things. Literally about an hour ago, I got a head of the very from a big media company here in Australia. It looks like we're going to be signing that and hopefully getting some massive exposure over the next long, long time. Um, and we head to Silicon Valley on the 10th of February to showcase at Google for Entrepreneurs Start Growing Global. So we're doing lots of really fun things. Um, I'm here tonight because I was meant to challenge a guy by the name of Ben Williamson from DealPad. Uh, to a picture off, but he pulled out the rights at the, like, right at the last second. Um, so unfortunately, you stuck with me. Um, but we're, we're about to open a round as well, um, so that's why we're here. And like I said, uh, we've got exciting things happening. Oh, God, I hate that bell. Um, but we, we, we really want to keep the community engaged. Uh, we want all you lovely people to download our app, tell your friends, and we like feedback. So help us out, help us grow. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And I'm glad you, 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 you got your purpose in here tonight as well because there are, there are, there are a few different reasons why people are pitching tonight. Sometimes it's practice, sometimes it's you've got a round coming up, sometimes it's if you're looking for stuff, whatever, so thanks for getting that in there. Um, and well done. Judges. Awesome, congratulations. Thanks, Anna. Hey, Love it. Just, sorry, quickly, Anna was the first person who actually gave me any exposure on anything. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Anna. We appreciate it. Woo, woo. I do remember. I I just wanted to ask a little question. We've got a two-sided marketplace, obviously. Which which side do you focus on in your marketing strategy? And also, tell us a little bit about how you're dealing with competitions. Obviously, that's a very crowded space. Love to, and the two quick, cool questions. So, um, the the two-sided marketplace is, is a really cool question. So, we so just to extend that slightly. I used to be a car dealer, so I started off 12 years ago as a cadet at BMW, I worked my ass off. When I was 30, I became part owner of a Mazda Volkswagen Nissan dealership, so I know this space really, really well, and that took me 13 years to get to that space. I got there, I was like, yes, 
I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a dealer principal. This is this is all I ever wanted, and I hated it. And 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 I've got a wife, and I've got kids, and I've got mortgages, and everything that everyone here has probably. And and it was at that point where I had to make a decision: Do I keep living something I didn't want to live, or do I do this? And this is what happened. But with that marketplace, I thought, you know what? I'm a dealer. We go to dealers. We had 50 dealers signed up. <laughs> we had 50 dealers signed up prior to launch, and then we ended up. Um, Launching, we got 150 people that course week weekend who inquired on our system, and it broke all our dealers. So we quickly had to pivot. We turned ourselves into a consumer marketplace, and then we onboarded a dealer from there. Um, and in terms of competition, um, talk about your products, launch your products. Don't be scared. In Australia, a lot of people are scared to talk about what they do. Talk about it. No one's going to steal the idea. It's probably a great idea, but no one's going to steal it. Um, and, and embrace your competition. They're there to help you grow. Right Thank you so much. Um, now next up we've got Adrian from Project Euclid. <laughs> yeah, I should call it uh, Silicon Forest, but uh, anyway, moving on. So, yeah. And here we go. Okay, yeah, so, um, name's Adrian, and uh, basically, I guess one, one problem I really foresee, um, and I guess really actually quite worries me, um, apart from anthropomorphic climate change, is really the digital divide, digital literacy. So, you know, I have a computer science degree and I've spent most of my career you know, in digital learning. Um, and I guess I've spent the past three months kind of prototyping and creating a, a system called Euclid. And I guess really what it is, it's, it's basically meant to be a, a online learning platform. Um, and the principle is, is basically that the idea is pretty much any technology you can think of, whether it's Bluetooth or Postgres SQL or blockchains, whatever, are basically seeds. And seeds are individual pieces of content that can be anything from, you know, if you think of it as a database record or a file or whatever. But the idea is, is that each seed basically scaffolds. So everyone has different experiences with technology, from noobs to nerds. And so the idea is so same piece of technology, it's basically kind of um, curated differently for different audiences. Cool. And so really the, the idea is, is that basically we will create free free courses available to anyone, but powered behind that is actually a learning graph, so a neo for j graph database for the nerds out there. And the idea is basically this will all be free, open source, and where we get funding is it's basically just on a foundation model. So basically I just need money for my salary. And so why I'm here today, basically just uh, it's my first pitch, as you can probably tell. But it's also just a kind of, yeah, just start the messaging. <laughs> That's terrific, that's terrific. And well done for your first pitch. Another round of applause, that's very impressive. Mate. Okay, judge is over to you. All right, yeah, congratulations again. Uh, pitching is pretty hard, especially when you haven't done it very often. Um, sort of two questions in one. Um, first of all, um, so in terms of your business model, is, did you say it's a non-profit? So please double down that a little bit. And also, uh, in terms of traction, what have you done so far to validate this? Like, um, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah, the idea would be it is a not for profit, and I actually don't want to be the next duck. I actually just want to be a, a, a dad who spends a lot of time with my kids and also learns about technology. So, effectively, I've designed it so I just need a salary. Um, so, I, I was made redundant last year, used some of my redundancy payment to set it up, which is a nice segue to your second question. So effectively, out of that three months, I've effectively designed the system architecture, the brand. Basically, if you like, I had the, the concept, and then basically starting to build out a prototype. So for instance, I've kind of set up my Firebase servers, um, kind of you know, registered all the domain names, uh, done the data modeling, yada yada. But now it's basically taking it to the next step, which is actually to you know, get something that, say, everyone could use. And so at the moment, I'd probably say probably two to three months off, maybe like a, probably a closed alpha. Um, and again, I'm taking this relatively slow. <coughs> So the idea would be to basically have an alpha for probably three months, then a beta for about four months, and then end of the year. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you very much. Um, you learned so much of these things. This is really amazing. All right. So three, number three, we have uh, Corey from Oot. Welcome, Corey. <laughs> And go for it. 
Hi, I'm Corey, and I'd like to introduce you to Mode. So Mode is a social media for fashion. It helps people find inspiration on what to wear. It also provides content plus commerce, allowing you to shop from other people's looks, and as a user, you can actually earn money on sales by commission. People currently have three distinct needs for fashion. Style inspiration, item inspiration, and shopping. And they use different platforms for each. Instagram is used for style inspiration. It's where people go to get inspired by friends, influencers, and celebrities. For a general fashion sense, and to see what's popular. For item inspiration, Pinterest and Google are used to find for an outfit base, uh, for an outfit based on a particular item, such as what can I wear with these jeans. And then shopping, like ASOS, The Iconic, etc. So what's the problem that mode, that mode solves? Most people don't have an outfit problem, they have a style problem. Everyone knows how to put together a few set items to create an outfit, but creating a holistic wardrobe that fits your style is much more difficult. People are struggling to solve this issue currently, as there is no dedicated platform for fashion inspiration, and no one platform addresses all three needs. Mode solves this problem by combining each individual area of style inspiration, item inspiration, and shopping in an easy-to-use platform. Thank you. Fantastic. Adrian gets uh, extra points for being undone. Um, <laughs> judges, go for it. Okay, so Corey, what would you say, or who would you say is your target market, and um, why? Uh, so people currently using Instagram, Pinterest to find um, their fashion inspiration. So currently, eight, uh, between the ages of 18 to 35, 66% of uh, women actually use either of those two platforms to find fashion inspiration. Just a really quick one um, for anyone. I think traction is generally one of the most important uh, metrics to see what has been done yet. So I know it's a bit late notice, but if you can chuck in there what you've done actually, you know, how many users or anything in terms of like, um, yeah, how many people believe in this, essentially, and want to use this, that is probably one of the most important things. So please chuck it in your pitch. Do you have any figures around uh, traction? Is that, is, that a, is that a half question as well, Bill? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you do, like if you... If you You've, you've actually got, you've done well, you've got 50 seconds left. Okay, what have you done so far, Corey? Share with us. Uh, so currently it's in its second prototype phase. So the first prototype I tested with uh, 30 users, um, just in for the prototype. Before that it was wireframes, etc., etc. Uh, we actually did a marketing push for about four days and we reached out to influencers. Uh, we had 20% of influencers actually willing to sign up on that day. There you go. Thank you very much. It's awesome. We've even got we've even got time for one from the audience if it's really quick. No, I put him on the spot. That's all right. That's my fault. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Corey. Good night. Okay. All right. So um, I think we get to make up a little bit of time here and then have a, a wild card at the end potentially. Is Ali from Taxi Bus Stop Melbourne not here? We get a wild card, everybody. That's exciting. All right. So coming up next, um, we've got Dee from uh, Reputation Air. Everybody, welcome, Dee. And your time starts now. Hi, I'm Dee, uh, CTO and co-founder of Reputation Air. Reputation Air provides an alternative future where users are in control of and can benefit directly from their reputation using existing services like Airbnb, Uber, and so on. We provide a way for users to prove that they are trustworthy and reliable with an option to remain anonymous yet trusted, kind of like Batman. Uh, our service is built on an irrefutable blockchain ledger giving users security, privacy, and control. If you'd like to join us on our journey to build a world where strangers can trust each other, we are looking for a business development manager who can join an award-winning MVP-ready startup, offering initial majority profit share, vested equity, and an opportunity to become a co-founder. Thank you. Great pitch. Um, thanks so much, Dee. Um, and I really love how clear you were with what your ask was today. So that's very helpful to us as well, as the audience. Quick question, why would I want to use Reputation Air? I, I want to understand a little bit more about the why. Um, because obviously Airbnb and other companies, you know, I'm already participating, already in their communities. How will you pull me over to your community? 
I can answer that with a story. So I came to Australia two years ago, and uh, the first thing that I had to do was find a place to live. And uh, trust me, that was the hardest thing because I hadn't got a job by then, and uh, I did not have local references. Apparently, that's a big thing here. <laughs> Uh, so, the way I worked around it was using my Airbnb reputation. So I had references as a guest, which I could use with the real estate agent, and that really worked in my favor, and that got me thinking, like, if I can do it, then so can around 800,000 migrants, I think, who move to Australia every year, they can benefit it too. Just another quick one for you then. With uh, the reputation, and being anonymous, you mentioned before, how does that apply to um, other people understanding that they can be, they can trust, or they can be trusted? Do you know what I mean? If you're anonymous, how do you maintain the trust factor, and why would you if you don't know who they are? So, if I'm going to play that around in a different angle, right? Like, if you're a real estate agent or a recruiter, even, you shouldn't have to care what religion or what age or, you know, you don't have to care about any of the things about a person, even gender. All you need to know is if a person is reliable. And that's what we're trying to demonstrate, that you don't need to know a person's name, you don't need to know how old they are, you just need to know if you can count on them. So that's where the anonymity really helps. Fantastic. All right, so we have to we have to stop there, but that's a terrific pitch. Thanks so very much. Thanks. Okay, next up we've got Brian from Bank Brand Dollar. Everybody, welcome, Brian. Cheers. No worries. Your time starts now. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, my name is Brian McCarthy, and I'm the founder of an exciting marketing tech startup called Brand Dollar. Attracting and engaging customers is the lifeblood of small businesses and startups. It's also something which is going to define how successful you're going to be in the future. And marketing is the backbone which makes that possible. However, marketing is also one of the most complex and costly areas for startups and small businesses to navigate. With over one and a half million small businesses in Australia, you would assume there would be a simple solution out there. Well. I'm delighted to introduce you to Brandalo. Brandalo is the automated marketing assistant for small businesses and startups. It's an online platform which is user friendly and uses machine learning to understand your business. It uses that information to make tailored and intelligent marketing recommendations and provide you with strategies to help you grow. Each marketing recommendation that you receive is accompanied by a micro learning video which teaches you exactly how to do what you recommend to do. And it's all managed via a centralized dashboard. We're pitching for two reasons tonight. One, to invite you guys to brandado.com to sign up your invitation to try the platform. And secondly, we're in the middle of building our MVP and we're looking for seed funding. So if you'd like to be part of an extraordinary startup journey, come have a chat. Brian, have you had any usability testing done yet? What is the feedback? Yeah, so interestingly enough, so we started off uh, with the problem. We didn't start with an idea in our heads. So we started with the problem. Uh, we did primary and secondary research around that. We spoke to over 100 startups and small businesses. Out of that, we built a proof of concept, which was cobbled together using third-party apps. And we tested it with 10 live businesses. Now, the feedback we got back was that they loved the solution. Uh, that the MVP we built was horrible, um, but that they got real value from it and they were willing to pay for it. So yes, and now we're actually building MVP Mark II, which takes all the learnings from the original research and the feedback from the proof of concept and reads them into this new, uh, much more tailored solution. Um, just on some of the solutions, uh, obviously you said there's a machine learning component. Um, is there any human sort of, Interaction with a business sometimes, as you say, this can be really you know unique. Yeah. So how do you how do you sort of tailor it, or is it just great? Great question. Um, it's actually made of two parts. So in the initial stage of the launch of Brandolo, we have to teach the machine. So that means that there is human quality control happening in the background of the machine's decisions, and that helps us teach the machine. Um, we actually have a marketplace built in, so that means that once we have an organisation who deals with those, 
tell us what their business looks like, what they sound like, what they walk like. We know what to recommend for them in terms of solution. And then what happens is we link those solutions to local marketing suppliers. So if using micro micro learning videos, they can't do it themselves, they can put the pressure release button and access a local supplier who recommend them. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks very much. That's a great day. Are you looking for local suppliers? Yeah. yeah, so maybe if you're a local supplier as well, hit Brian up. All right, of marketing, I assume, of food supplying. All right, um, next up we have um, Max uh, from Zero Impact. Awesome, welcome, Max. Thank you very much. Thank you. And one second, your time starts now. Hey everyone, my name is Max, and I'm the founder of a clean energy company taking uh, converting fuel from coffee. In Australia, there's 200,000 tonnes of coffee that goes to landfill every single year. This costs coffee shops $24 million to pick up this waste and dump it into landfill. It's also an environmental disaster. The amount of CO2 that is released from this activity is greater than the entire emissions from Tasmania. We're talking an extra state. What if? What if we could collect this waste from the 20,000 coffee shops from around Australia and convert into a high-performing, cost-competitive fuel, solid or liquid form? This would uh, negate the massive carbon debt that's been created and also provide sustainable, renewable fuel. What I'm looking for today is a co-founder that can balance out kind of much of my strengths and weaknesses, someone who's very detail-oriented, uh, in the operations space, and also uh, some seed funding as well. Currently doing an MVP and a bit of a trial. Um, we've got rest, uh, cafes on Chapel Street that are interested, groceries across the city. This is ready to go, technology is proven. Um, I'm really excited. Check out zeroimpactenergy.com. Thank you. First of all, great pitch and great idea. Really loved Thank it. You. Um, and good on you for trying to make the world a better place through that. Um, first question um, is probably about engaging community, I think, around this one. Have you got a plan to do that? You mentioned that uh, coffee shops are obviously very busy, you know, asking them to add another sort of process to their supply chains, all that sort of stuff. How do you manage? How do you manage? Yeah, great, great question. Um, understand that. Waste isn't the core of many uh, you know, coffee shops' core business. So the service that I'll be providing, or we'll be providing, would be a value add. So it'd be at least a free pickup, or down the track they get a nominal fee to be part of the program. So they're actually seeing an income stream, a new income stream, um, to valorize this particular resource. It strengthens the supply chain, um, and gives an incentive for people to get involved. Uh, much like when Uber first started rolling out, it was a you know, 10 pound, $10 credit for you, $10 credit per person. Kind of see the same kind of system there. One question I have in, uh, with the coffee waste, what do you intend to fuel and how much coffee do you need to fuel to make it viable? Yeah, great question. So across Australia, we burn 6 million tonnes of firewood a year. This is solid fuel, it's going to burn in people's fireplaces and your stove at home. The 200,000 tonnes of coffee is a drop in the ocean compared to that. So I see fulfilling that need which we have hundreds of thousands of stoves and fireplaces in Victoria and Tasmania um, as the first step. Likewise, there's industrial applications for biofuel. In fact, coffee is 20% oil. You may have seen uh, Qantas, they... Okay. That's in my next pitch later. I've got one quick question. Can I put it in the flux capacitor and travel three times? Nice! Nice! <laughs> That was a bit over the top. Um, I'm glad I got to do two dings though, that felt extreme. Everyone's been so polite tonight, it's wonderful. I'm not doing anything. All right, um, next up we have Chris uh, O'Brien from Murana. All right, so your time starts now. 
Hi, how are you doing there? My name's Chris. Uh, I'm for a company called Mira. Uh, I'm a freelancer for eight years so far, and I've been a product manager for about two, so that, that, that's my goal as a freelancer. Um, so I'm here to talk about something called Mira, uh, which is freedom for freelancers and transparency for their clients. This may sound a little bit deja vu. Um, so I'm looking to solve the problem of reputation building of the 34% of the world's workforce that currently freelance. Yeah? So that's, uh, that reputation is still kind of, uh, it's quite broken at the moment. What's happening is basically that reputation is either bullshit because people just make it up, put it on the website, put it into their sales funnel, or uh, it's locked up on all of these uh, marketplace websites for freelancers. Yeah. So I'm looking to solve the problem by making it easy for freelancers to collect <coughs> verified testimonials and display them to their clients wherever they engage with their clients. Yeah. Um, so the testimonial is trusted because it's impossible for a freelancer to delete or get rid of the, uh, the testimonials. Um, and it's, it's free basically for freelancers. They can use this where, wherever they're going, they can keep up marketplaces, that sort of stuff. Um, so, I'll tell you where I'm at this thing. So, I, uh, I'm at MVP stage. Uh, I ripped this thing up over Christmas. I uh, released it on the 1st of January, uh, which is the worst time to release anything, so I'd never do that. Um, they want some over. Uh, so, I've got uh, 65 users currently as of this morning. Um, it's very so to take together. Uh, and about one or two people are turning up every single day and using it, sticking around, asking for testimonials from people. I'm super surprised. Uh, so basically what I'm looking for today is 10 co-founder or money to hire tech people. Woo! Thanks for pitching. Uh, what is your business model? Tell us a bit about that. Uh, freemium. Because, uh, well actually, yeah. so freemium currently, so I'm trying to figure out which features people will pay for. Because to be honest with you, the most risky thing of this is people were okay with not deleting testimonials about themselves. So I thought I might try that one out first. Uh, this week, because I knew we were going to have probably this question would come, I started testing out how much Americans would pay, because fuck, I haven't got money right. So I started with a really high price, like a hundred bucks for a year subscription. Nobody paid. Um, so I'm kind of whittling that down until I figure out what the highest price is to pay for. So the answer is, nobody's paid for it. So I won't go to premium and figure out which which feature they pay. If you do go premium, make sure you've got some good connections in the investor world. Good. If it's uh, good connections in yes. the investor world, because premium is very expensive in the early days. I know. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. We've got we've got thirty seconds. Another question or from the audience? Yeah, I got a question. Nice. So, um, how are you dealing with people who are putting uh, comments that may not even be true? Uh, at the moment, super simple. But go look at MVP, Mirar, M I R A A R dot com. Go put that in. Um, it sucks, right? So at the moment, basically, you have to invite someone to come and to come and rate you. Problem hasn't shown up yet. I've got to figure out a way to fix that. I'll come and do it to token side at the moment. So you send a token, they can come to that link, and then, yeah, that's it. Not a very good solution. Let's go. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. That's the, uh, that's the second reputational um, startup tonight. So that's an interesting uh, trend for 2018, perhaps. Um, so, doing that. That's sad, isn't it? Who's the president? Um, so, who, who is Mac from Quote now here? Yep. Oh, fantastic. Come on down. Go for it. Sorry, um, as you see, last minute writing here. Um, you're supposed to know it all, and I think I do, but um, yeah, obviously, it's the first pitch, so here I am. Uh, my name is Mac, and I'm here to talk to you about a new company called Quote Now. The company, uh, sorry, we're here looking for investment and collaboration. Collaboration. <coughs> uh, Quote Now is a property, sorry, a management platform focused on the property industry. Our mission is to be the number one application used for property. Anything and everything property. I know, it's a big one. Isn't it? Currently, we're focusing on the property management market, okay, um, which connects tenants, landlords, property managers, and trades. So the original concept, I'm going off this really, because I think uh, it works better when you speak from what you know. Um, so the original concept quote now came from the idea. What, why get a quote later when you can get a quote now? As simple as that. That is really my pitch um, in a short sentence. Um, and I'll probably roll with that and wait for questions. It's probably the best way. <laughs> Fantastic. Good stuff. Okay, bring it. Future questions, where do I start? Um, what is the problem? How uh, and, and 
Yes, the what's the problem you're trying to solve and, and how did you come uh, yeah. did you come to it? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so, <laughs> so basically, uh, I am not a tech person, sorry. Okay, I, I'm not a developer, I'm not in the IT industry, I'm a Sparky. Okay, uh, so I'm a Sparky uh, and I've been in management before, I won't talk about that, but basically, I've always been interested in systems and management and good communication. Uh, this is probably not a display of good communication. But <laughs> basically, uh, I noticed being a Sparky qualified for the last four years, there's actually a lot of opportunity. I call them opportunities because there's a lot of problems with uh, communication. For example, in property management, you'd have, I'll put this down, because it looks like I'm shaking and I am, but I'm going see. <laughs> so in property management, is anyone in here in property management? Yeah, yeah cool. All right, okay. All right, now, so uh, you deal with trades all the time? Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. And you deal with landlords all the time? Yeah. And maybe even VK? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what were you, mate? Anyways, there's a lot of issues, okay, that we aim so a lot. Uh, there's not just one issue, but one particular issue is for um, getting quotes now, okay? So the goal is actually to create and develop an algorithm based system, which, if you go to a company, and you go, I want to quote from you, a company, company X, you'll, they'll give you a price. But what this does is, through smart uh, algorithms, creates a price straight away, okay? And it's a guide. So that was the original concept, okay? To get quotes, prices straight away. Two o'clock in the morning, you think you're gonna get quotes from trades? No. Now, it's a price, thank you. <laughs> you wrap, it up, wrap it up with a couple more sentences, that'll be great. Cool, okay, so basically where we're at at the moment is probably what I'll, I'll, I'll take it. We've got a product that we plan to launch in about March, March, April. Okay, um, and we have about 6,000 properties ready. <laughs> no worries, man. Thank you. Good. Good. That's the second first um, pitch tonight, so Matt gets another round of applause as well. It's his first pitch. Okay, cool. So, um, that was quote now. And next up we have Bawant from uh, the Lake Stock ID. So, uh, so I'm presenting here the Velix ID. It's an ID verification system which is based on blockchain and it's going to solve the problem where you have to give your 100 points document every time to every same vendor again and again you want to go and do things. Uh, so the biggest problem in the ID ver verification uh, industry is you go to a <coughs> vendor and you provide your documents to them. You don't know what, uh, they're just making photocopies, you can see what your details are, and you're not sure that whether they are honest enough that they will put that into the system and then discard the documents. They, those documents can be leaked out into the wrong hands. And so, the things like this, there are a lot of risks along, uh, along with these things where you can, um, your uh, information can be hacked from a centralized system. So, Velix.id covers up all these issues. And with this system, you can, uh, sorry. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah. So, so with the system, what we actually do is we give you an eight-digit alphanumeric ID, which you can share across anyone openly in the public way, which does not disclose any of your information. If anybody wants to get your information, like a bank or a small business or a person, individual, he can just put that very ID into the system where you get a notification that this person has requested this information and you approve or deny based on your preference. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the audience. And does this have the magic B word in it? Yes. <laughs> audience? Oh. Sorry. Has anyone got any questions? First of all, that's a great idea, by the way. It's very needed and excellent, hopefully excellent use of blockchain. Does <laughs> um, anyone else have a question, question that you wanted to throw it out? Um, I wasn't quite sure about your ask, actually. What are you, uh, uh, you're, you're, sorry, you're pitching because you're asking for what? Uh, so are asking only for 
uh, support from the community. So when we say support, support can be of any type, whether uh, it could be a feedback or someone who wants to join us as a team member, or yes, money is always good. If you want to invest, <laughs> uh, we, have, we are also running an ICU right now, so you can just go there and invest into that. And yeah, that's that's all kind of support we need. We are talking to businesses like Ospos, uh, Equifax, and uh, it's it's not Australia based only; it's a global based. So our uh, initial targets are India and Australia. Australia has this problem. India has solved this problem using a hard card. Uh, but the problem is, I do have a hard card, but it doesn't work here. So it's it's like a, it doesn't exist for me. So the point is, we are making Vilex ID a platform where you can just link all your ID verification documents, degrees. Uh, certifications or any sort of uh, verification or attestation, you just put it across the platform and you can share it across the world without any hesitation, even if that uh, degree provider does not exist anymore. Nice. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have uh, Diane from uh, Van. Uh, hello guys, my name is Diane, and I recently moved from the Netherlands to Australia to expand VanHack into Australia. And uh, VanHack we started about three and a half years ago in Vancouver, and we started off as an educational platform, giving senior developers English training and communication training. Because we saw that a lot of developers are really good at you know, technological skills, but sometimes we miss that critical communication skill. So we completely build them up on the communication side, and whenever they're ready to go, the top bracket of our, the community right now, we help those guys to relocate. So over time, we've now accumulated a community of over 110,000 developers, spread over 72 different countries. And uh, yeah, now we're dedicated to help the top people move to companies such as Booking.com, Accenture, Uber, and also a lot of startups that are in need of these developers. Um, so that's why we're in Australia to connect with a lot of companies that are in need of you know, top-notch developers. And these developers are not only moving because you know, they, have, you know, they want to have better investment opportunities or good company culture fit, oftentimes they need they're actually looking for also an increased quality of life. Some of our community members are from the favelas in Brazil, from some villages in Africa, really tough backgrounds, and they deserve to have the opportunity, as all of us to also have a shot at these amazing jobs. So we believe that talent is spread equally, but opportunity is not. And that's why I'm here, uh, traveling the world, to pretty much present these uh, you know, community members of mine with the opportunity to live the life that they want to live. So. Thanks for pitching, was, that was really good. Um, I was going to ask, I remember from back in the um, days where I was studying economics, uh, one of the most, the biggest challenges for companies to go abroad, but also for teams to work together well, yeah, are cultural barriers more than anything else. So you teach these people English, but what about the cultural barriers? How, uh, yeah, how, how does that work? For sure. So in my pitch I said that we teach them uh, English skills and also just soft skills and communication skills, right? So as you're, you're saying oftentimes about company cultures that might be also a bit geographical bound, but we believe that once you are a person that is, you know, uh, let's say able to function in a team, able to communicate their ideas clearly to people, uh, be honest, have integrity, just these like basic, let's say, communication skills, that's what we give them. Eventually, of course, when it comes someone comes from Brazil or Nigeria to Australia, there's going to be some cultural barriers. But we believe that that is actually an opportunity, not a barrier. You know, when you let loose people from different like, perspectives from different cultures, that actually solves a lot of problems because you throw the same perspective at the same problem, you're going to get the same outcome. So that's kind of a long answer to your question. Is it just, sorry, is it just the developer community, or are you going to think of expanding it into other skill sets? <laughs> yeah, so good question, and no, we're definitely going to keep focusing on technological skills, uh, especially because we see one of our business assumptions that we're based on is. Uh, a shortage of developers. There's a massive shortage of developers worldwide. Uh, but they're out there. And we found them, so we're going to bring them over. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Okay, we've got four more in the lightning round, I think I've decided to call it. Um, up next is uh, Nigel Lamb from uh, my CME. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Nigel from MyCME Online. Um, 
if you've ever had to spend your own money out of your own pocket on um, behalf of your employer, then you'll know all about submitting uh, reimbursement claims. So doctors and senior medical staff regularly have to spend thousands of dollars out of their own pocket on their continuing medical education. Uh, most hospitals are still running paper-based systems to track and pay back these costs. Um, often the, the rules are not well understood about what they're allowed to claim. The administrators have a really hard time tracking, uh, validating, approving, and reporting on these expenses. My CME Online is a tailor-based web portal that solves exactly this problem. Uh, so it provides, um, oh, doc doctors can submit their claims from anywhere in the world. Um, it comes with work workflow, online approvals, and reporting for the administrators. This is a live system right now at two major hospitals in Melbourne. I'm uh, planning a deployment right now at another hospital, and I'm negotiating with several others. Uh, so I'm here looking for funding uh, so that I can develop more features and market this to a wider user base, and I would also love to speak with any awesome uh, front-end JavaScript developers that are out there. Uh, so my CME me online, reimbursements are easy. Thank you. It's tricky in 90 seconds, isn't it? <laughs> so, oh God, I had a question right then. Oh, the trial market, you're working with these particular hospitals right now. What's the feedback and how has it improved their systems? Uh, so, the first major hospital, um, the CME, CME administrator has gone from being effectively 0.8 of a full-time staff member down to about 0.6. So, this is literally saving them money. Um, and also, they have reporting. Um, so, whereas before, this is completely paper-based. So, they, they really had no idea sometimes what they were spending and where. Um, uh, my other second hospital, they, um, they had a dedicated CME administrator. Um, previously, she was tracking each doctor had a, a tab in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so if they wanted to know how much more budget they had, they had to ring her up, hope that she was in that day and ask her. Um, so we've gone from that to an online system where they can just log in and see their budget. Okay, uh, Mike Gentry from Dotter. Thank you. No worries. Okay, so imagine I was trying to find some live music around here right now. How would I do that? First thing I'd do probably is go to Google Maps, I'd search for live music venues, I'd see a few markers, but then what I'd need to do is go to every marker, to every website, see what live music they've got, whether I like it, whether it's on now, and then decide to go. This is slow, but also limited because all searching for is plans in advance. It's been promoted by the venues. Take that same example, but instead of live music, let's say I'm looking for a fashion pop-up store. Let's say I'm looking for a festival food truck or a market store. Let's say I'm looking for a coffee shop that's open on a public holiday. In every one of these cases, I face exactly the same problem. There's no way for me to quickly find out what's happening around me right now. So our solution is called Dotter. Dotter is a live map of the world where anyone, anywhere, can place a marker called a dot, which will fade away slowly over four hours before vanishing forever. The dot has a hashtag attached to it, a bit of text, so it's essentially a searchable live map of the world which only shows me what's around right now. But the best part is that it's populated by the people who are actually there. So we went live last month, we had a soft launch, we've got an iOS app, a web app, all the text there. This is our first public announcement that Dotter exists, our first pitch. We're here to pitch to you as users. We want to build this community, we're really excited to build it out of Melbourne. So please, um, thank you. Uh, please visit us, Dotter.io. Thank you. Great pitch. Thanks, Thank you. Um, definitely awesome because you know it's always handy to know what's on Melbourne. Yeah. How does it not exist? It's, it's, I know what's on Melbourne. I've got to step up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just the biggest question is like who 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 who's, who's who you're marketing to? Is it people in town, tourists coming through, and what's the incentive for users to actually comment or even contribute? To it's a concept? Mad, like, It's a big, it's a tough one. So. The type of person we're looking for is anyone who is going to do something that is not plants. So the market for, well, I would say the, the market, I'd say the user base is basically anyone at this point who is willing to do something without having a plan. Um, so how we market to those people, 
I think the best approach for us is to start small because it's better to have 10 users in a really concentrated space who are active, um, you know, let's say around Melbourne, which is what we're trying to build in Melbourne, um, than it is to have you know, 100 or 1,000 users dispersed around the world who can't you know, contribute to each other. Now, the, the other question that you raised, I'll answer it in the next stage. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Spell it. So how do you spell it? D O T T R I O. Yeah, T T R dot I O. Fantastic. All right, we're in the home stretch, folks. We've got two more to go, and then uh, there'll be a quick round of drudging, and then the, the the final round where we get a little bit more in depth and ask a couple more questions, and we give prizes, which I didn't even mention at the start. I'll do that after these next two pictures. Um, so John from Shifties, come on down. And your time sort of starts now. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but 40% uh, of Australians uh, work either shift roles or part-time in this country. And employers often struggle to build and communicate the schedule of staff, especially around last-minute changes, so things like uh, leave, shift swapping and illness. So that's 5 million Australians who have their work-life balance challenged by how their employers schedule their work. I'm John, and I'm the founder of Shifties. And Shifties is a rostering solution for companies that love their staff. What we do is we help employers automate the roster build process and then communicate and co-plan shifts with staff through their phones. We match people to the shifts that they want to take and we post a central resource for everybody to see what's being planned. And co-planning for us is a secret source. Studies show that giving staff a say in their work-life balance leads to happier staff, higher throughput and lower staff too. We're currently working to prove our chops with Victoria Police in a complex rostering program. And we're making moves behind the scenes right now to move into the healthcare planning uh, space in Australia and overseas. So we're looking to speak with investors and developers who would be interested in joining that journey with us. And we invite you to, to go visit our website at shifties.com where you can sign up and join our insiders program and find out a little bit more about how we want to take and improve people's work-life balance around the world. Thanks very much. Okay. Maybe you can share a bit about your business model. Um, how much value does this really provide to companies? How much value can you capture back? So, um, there's studies that show that uh, improving work life balance lowers the, um, the amount of leave that people take, so cities, taking cities. And that translates to about a 4% payroll savings rate. We also have a significant time saving. So we've got clients who've been testing this in MVP who spend three weeks of their year doing a plan for 12 months for 50 staff, and we can solve that for 30 seconds. And not only do we solve it, but we allow them to keep that live. So their original turns into an Excel spreadsheet, which is dead. As soon as someone leaves, moves, is sick, that stops. Great pitch. Um, yeah, the lovely T-shirt. <laughs> Just a quick question on just the expertise, because obviously every industry has very nuanced cultures and ways of doing things. Yes. Do you have that expertise? How labour intensive is it to go through, say, doing that with the police? And how do you scale that to other industries? So uh, the MVP process has been a good learning experience for us, and cost of onboarding new clients is one of those risks that we need to be aware of when we bring people on. So as we build more rules, we're a, we use a rules-based engine, and I can explain that more if we get to the next round. Um, we, we build those up as a bank, and so we've got those rules we can use. But we, we can solve program, uh, solutions much faster than people, even with the main experience of producing their own rules. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. OK, so for the final pitch uh, for tonight in the lightning round, we've got Stuart Dalrymple from Better Bill. Uh, your time starts now, Stuart. Is this thing on? Um, quickly, I'm short of time, but can everyone just do a big stretch for me? I'm tired, you guys are tired. Arms in the air. <laughs> Thanks, stretch up high and keep your arms up if you've ever lived paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. It's extremely stressful, and you might be like my friend. Um, you might be a friend like, like my friend Lucy. Now, Lucy has a big problem. Uh, she has tons of bills. She can't stay on top of them, and it don't align with how she gets paid. She gets paid fortnightly, but her bills come in 
uh, weekly, fortnightly, quarterly, monthly, yearly. She can't keep track of it. It's a nightmare. It's stressful. So what um, I'm Stuart Dalrymple from Betterbill. What we are is a custom payment plan which debits a single amount per pay that's designed to cover all your bills for the year. You can just spend the rest of your money and know you won't fall short. You never ask for access to your bank account. You have increased privacy, increased security. Um, the alter there's a big rise of lending, short-term lending, smart little loans, afterpay, and the debt's going through the roof. This is your money, it's not a loan, and we're giving people like Lucy an alternative to reduce the debt, reduce tool shock, uh, reduce stress, and she's even eating less tuna noodles, which is awesome. Um, we're building end products with a big focus on UX. We'd love to get your feedback. Um, that's what I'm asking for. So betterbuild.me. Uh, we have an upcoming later. You can jump on and give us feedback. So much stretch. So you mentioned this is going to help Lucy uh, with her monthly and life payment out. What about the situation when, say, there's a real emergency, the dog's got to go in for a massive amount of surgery, there's all this money that's being taken out, you know, for that time, and then she really needs to focus on something else. What's the flexibility on that? Um, yeah, great question. So currently we're not designed to loan, it's a, as I said, we don't want to increase people's debt. Um, people could have the option to add a buffer, almost like a, a gross bill if you like, so put a little bit extra away. Um, when we found, talking to our friends, that you know, we've all read Barefoot Investor and you can have five accounts, but it's so easy to move the money around that it doesn't happen. So um, we haven't really considered that option, honestly, but you can add a fake bill to, to put some buffer away, essentially. You. Can you actually change, like, say for instance, five hundred dollars is coming out a month. So, yeah. um, can you stop that to yeah. then cover something else? For sure. So you can pause or cancel or refund at any time. Okay. Sorry, I just need. I turn it off. a quick question: Is is the service that you're putting that money away for the person, and then you're managing it for them, or is it because because I can put that into a bank? You so can't, like, you, absolutely. How, are you, how are you helping? So it's almost like a personal trainer. Anyone can do exercise, but some people need that helping hand. We, some people just need to not spend that money because they're overdrawn every time. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we've talked to a lot of people and they just say it's like, that's true, I can't do it. Christmas, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and um, just one last part on our website, betterbill.me, there is a free budget calculator. If you're wondering where all your money goes, you can just add it there and see. Great time. Nice, always been terrific. <laughs> All right, um, so that's it, folks. Thank you so much. Now, we're going to try and be, the judges are going to try and be um, very brief about this. It was a terrific bunch of um, pitches. I, I couldn't cut it if you, uh, I don't know about you guys. We're going to come back after about five minutes. There's still some drinks over there. And then we're going to have three to four minutes from the finalists. Then we're going to give the prizes. Now, the prizes are, get this, first prize. There's a ticket to Pause Fest next week. So we've got four, four ticket to Pause Fest to give away. It's not bad. It's not bad. Then the two runner-up prizes are uh, um, a month-long co-working at two schools, plus a food plan for us. And uh, the Sydney's uh, for sort of uh, training sessions or training sessions. So that's five